And so question 14 then, hmm, from the 2015 New Hire Paper 1. A little two-mark question that caused a little bit of confusion because there was a little bit of a slip in its construction. Here you have the equation of a circle, and it says it meets the coordinate axis at exactly three points. That was the business. What does this exactly three points mean? Because there was actually a couple of situations, but... It then says, what is the value, singular of k, as if there's only one situation that applies and then there's some reason why you've got to exclude the other one. And certainly the same question appeared in the alternative, original hire, in the multiple choice, with only one correct solution to it. Well, what would that be? Here's a circle. You know it's centre, so you could sketch it. So a set of axes. The centre of this circle will be at 6, 5. Half of the negative, half of the negative. So the centre's 6 along, 5 up. There's the centre of the circle. And that's all that's specified here. So as this circle expands, the first thing it'll do since it's 6 along or 5 up is bump into the x-axis. Then as it expands, it'll cut through it, moving closer, and then it'll bump into the y-axis. And that looks like the situation then where you've got three points. Like that. Circle-ish. Well, what would that situation be? Because they've got two points in the x-axis and one point in the y-axis. That's what it said. Cut the axis exactly three points. Well, there's actually two ways you could do that. You could either from that say, well, obviously if it's six along and five up, then it's radius it's 6, and then use that radius algorithm, that little rule for finding the radius from this to find k. So that would be one way. That's the only way that's mentioned in the marking scheme. So the first part would be for saying, well, if it touches the y-axis, that means the radius is 6. That would be a mark. And then for feeding that into that little rule for working out the radius, which is the radius is the square root of whatever you wish to call it with your p's and q's and so on. I'm just going to go for a squared plus b squared minus the number at the end minus c. Then you could feed that in. r is 6, but I'll do the square root over here, so that would be 36 would be just these. The centre squared minus the number at the end. So that'll be 6 squared plus 5 squared minus k. Well, obviously 36 cancels out 36, so you're left with k equals 5 squared, k equals 25, and there's the second mark. Now, of course, that's not the only way of doing it. This is an equation with three unknowns in it, if you like. If you want to find one of them, you need numbers for the other two. Well, you do. On this circle, when it just touches the y-axis, it touches that at the point 0, 5, none along, 5 up. So an alternative way would be to substitute 0, 5, in this equation, we'll just give it a name for that purpose. Just substituting that into this should be the first mark by this other method. And then actually putting it in and working out, the answer would be the second mark. Well, if x is 0, then all the x terms will disappear and you'll just be left with the y's. So you'll have 5 squared minus 10 times 5 plus k should equal 0. So k is going to be taking that across. 50 minus 25, k equals 25. Of course, the same answer. Now, the other situation, which probably wasn't allowed for during the construction of this question, would be, as that circle expands, then, of course, now does it no longer just cut the x-axis in two places, it'll start to cut the y-axis in two places, so that's four. Only problem with that is, as it expands to cut the y-axis, the, intersect, the lower intersection with the y and the nearer intersection x get closer together and then cross over, but at the origin they're going to be coincident, a single point on the plane nevertheless. So the second situation is this expanded circle that now passes through the origin. So it's got one, two, three points of intersection. So that had to be patched into their marking scheme. But of course, sticking to the same root of radius makes it a bit longer in this case because the radius of that new circle, if you wanted to find the radius and then feed it into that little radius formula, would take a bit more because the radius of that, or rather the radius squared, would come from Pythagoras. That's six along, five up. 
So r squared would be 6 squared plus 5 squared. And indeed, in the marking scheme, it's got the first answer for identifying the length of the radius. So you'd have to go the whole hog and say, that's 35. And 25 makes 61, so r is root of 61 for the first mark. And then the second mark would be then for using that little formula. The radius is a square root of whatever you like. I'll put a squared plus b squared minus c. You may use your p's and q's. And then feeding that in, but putting the square root back over here again, or rather undoing it. That would be 61 equals, and that was 6 squared plus 5 squared. Same things, minus k. And then obviously, since 6 squared plus 5 squared is 61, that means that k equals 0. And those were the way the two marks were allocated in the marking scheme for the quick patch up. But of course, there's an alternative way. This is an equation with, if you like, three unknowns. If you want one of them, you just need numbers for the other two. So if you know a point on this new circle, and you do, that's the origin, then it should be, if you substitute that point into the equation, it will leave you just numbers apart from k, and then you can get k. So that should have been the first mark. And then substituting it in means obviously all the x's and all the y's disappear. So you just end up with 0 plus k equals 0. In which case, k equals 0. Much simpler way of doing it.